what is going on guys welcome back to another swift tutorial in today's video we're going to be looking at pull to refresh otherwise known as ui refresh controls so here we are on apple's documentation website and i'm not going to read through it or make you guys read through it that's what i'm here for so but what, what i did want to show is um the screenshot here and it highlights what we're talking about so it's the pretty common thing that you see uh, in a lot of apps, because it's a standardized component where you can pull down a collection view or a table view or any type of scroll view for that matter and refresh its contents. So we're going to take a look at building this. We're going to hook it up with an API that returns data to have a more realistic example, similar to like pull to refresh on Instagram or things like that. So that said, make sure you smash that like button before we get started for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out quite a bit. We want to absolutely destroy that like button. So go ahead and do that. Hit subscribe while you're at it if you're new to the channel. Get Xcode ready, get excited, and let's get into it. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna begin obviously by opening up Xcode and we're gonna create a new project with a command shift N and we'll stick with a single view application and I'm gonna call this pull to refresh. Should have called that pull my finger actually, that would have been funny, too late. Uh, I will save it in the iOS Academy folder. I'm gonna be pushing this up for all of you uh, coder level members. And let me expand this Xcode window before we get started. And let's also pick a simulator. We can stick with this simulator. Let's just hit this run button so it boots up our simulator and we can get into our code. So any second simulator, there it goes. Okay, awesome. So first things first, we need to set up something to refresh. So we're gonna set up a table view and we're also gonna set up actually fetching data. So we need to do a couple of things. The first thing we're going to do is uh, set up the table. Uh, what, I, what I'm gonna actually do even before then is in my browser, let me copy this URL. And let's just put it in here. Uh, we're gonna have a function to fetch the data. So let me just create that function to fetch data. Let's paste that in there and let's set up that table view real fast. So we're gonna create a table view in code. If the autocomplete decides to cooperate, let's put that table view there. We're gonna return said table. We also want to register a UI table view cell for the identifier of cell. And let's see, what else do we want? We also want the UI table view data source, UI table view delegate. Let's go ahead and implement that. We're gonna want number of rows. We'll return zero for now. Cell for row. We will dequeue a basic table view cell with the identifier that we registered, which is cell for the given index path. We're gonna set the cells text label to be uh, hello for now. We will return said cell. And we also want did select row at index path. And then we'll call it deselection function like so. So we need to actually fetch data. Uh, let me actually just make this 10 and run it to make sure our table shows up. Uh, it would be a fantastic idea if we add the table as a sub view. So let me do that. And we should also give this guy a frame. So we're gonna do that in view did layout sub views. So we're gonna say it's frame equals view dot bounds. So I can actually close this left panel here. So you guys have a little more room to work with. And I can actually, hopefully decrease the font size a little bit and you guys can still see it but see more code go ahead and hit command r we should have a basic table view showing up now hopefully it looks like we don't 
uh, table view, number of rows is 10. Uh, oh, we should assign duh, we should assign the table views delegate and data source. That's obviously important. I feel like I've written table views like 30 times today. Let's try that one more time. And there it goes, looking good. All right, cool. So let's actually fetch that data before we can look at the refresh ability, if that's a word. If it's not, it is now. So let me grab that URL and let's create a URL here and it gets created optionally because it might not be a valid string. We know it's a valid string because we got it from our browser. And let's see, basically we're gonna create this URL. We're gonna create a data task off of URL session. We're gonna say data task with a URL and a completion handler. We're gonna get the error. We don't care about the response, the HTTP response uh, and the data, that's what we want. We're gonna validate data exists and error is nil. And let's see, then we need to convert this data to a codable object. And then after that, we have to actually start the request. So we could just say task.resume. We wanna convert the data to a codable object. So I'm gonna copy the schema here. And we can just put the struct at the top of this file. We don't have to be super organized for this video. So let me create a comment here and paste that in. And let's create a struct that uh, basically looks like this. I'll call this API response, make this codable. First thing is going to be called response or results. And it looks like it points to another dictionary, which will be another type that we need to create. And let's see what else is on the top level. Looks like we have a status, which points to a string. So let's put this here. And why is this guy complaining? Is it because we don't have anything in here yet maybe? But we're gonna copy all of this stuff. So that's what's in the results. Control I it to fix the indentation. And let me go ahead and option drag, click and drag and you can get the multiple cursor thing that I've got going on right there. And let's see, we can drop this first random uh, double quote now that we deleted the first one and we can double click these now and these are all strings it looks like so we can replace them all pretty simply and we need to get rid of those commas too this one is an integer string and a string get rid of those commas two more Whoops, you want the G, get rid of that comma. All right, we should be good to go now. We have both of these objects. Why is this guy complaining? We should put a colon here, that's why it's complaining. So we have this codable thing. This is what we should try to convert the data to. If you're not familiar, familiar with codable, I just uploaded a dedicated video on it, so take a look at that. So I'm gonna say uh, let result is gonna be this guy. And we can actually make it a variable. Man, I really can't type today, huh? And we're gonna say uh, this will be a do catch statement. And we'll say results equals try to use JSON decoder to decode this new type from the data we get from the response. Otherwise, handle error, which we're not gonna do because we're lazy. And once we have this, what we want to do is unwrap it like so. And we're gonna create a array on this class, on this view controller called data. And it'll be mutable, so make it a var. And it'll just be uh, a array of strings. And our table view will use that data to populate itself. So number of rows will be data.count. The text labels text will be data and the given thing at that position. This function's irrelevant. We're not dealing with the delegate in this video. But basically once we have some data back from our API, we're gonna say 
data append. So sunrise is going to be final dot. I think there's a, what is it? Results dot sunrise. We're also going to append sunset. And we're going to make this guy sunset. Uh, this is going to be complaining because we want data off of self and this is also called data. So let me call this variable table data just so it has differing names. And let me also return table data dot count here. And this will also be table data. This is in a closure, so we need to uh, unwrap, rather not retain uh, self. So we're going to say weak self here. And we want to unwrap it to be strong self. So we're going to say let strong self equals self like that. And then we can prefix all of these calls to strong self like so. Uh, let me hit command B since we wrote a decent amount of code. What did I break? Let's see, data, data, data. This should be a comma. Hit command B one more time. And let me append in this last one as day length. And let's go ahead and hit command R. And actually we need to do one more thing. So we need to, once we've updated the data, we need to tell the table to reload. So we'll say strong self dot table dot reload data. All right, let's hit command R. I apologize for the decent amount of setup work, but it's all important for a practical example. We should probably call this function also to actually kick off this fetch. So go ahead and put that at the bottom of viewed load. And once we get our data back, we should be getting it refreshed, but it looks like we have an error here. What is this random error we have? Oh, I know what it is. In here, we should be calling the reload on the main thread. And it actually tells you that right there in the warning. So let's hit stop and let me put this on a main queue call. So dispatch queue main async. And we should be good to go. It's going to kick off the data fetch. It was really fast. To, there was very little lag. But we now have our data coming in from our API. Uh, just ignore the actual formatting of this. It's not really relevant for the video. But we want to add a pull to refresh. So how do we do that? That part's pretty cool. So it's pretty easy, actually. So you're going to say table. Uh, and there's a thing on here called refresh control. And you can just assign it to a refresh control. And what I like to do is just instantiate it like that. And then we can actually add a target to it. Whoops. Add a target to it by saying table dot refresh control dot add target self. We're going to want an action. And I'm going to call it uh, did pull to refresh. And the event you want is value changed. And we're going to create that function. It needs to be prefixed with uh, Objective-C to expose it to the Objective-C runtime. And basically, now we want to uh, refetch data here. And once we're done updating our actual data and all that stuff, we want to say dispatch queue, main queue, async, self, table, refresh control, table, refresh control. I think it's did end updating. That's not what we want. Update if needed. Nope, we don't want any of that. Might be finished. Could have swore there was a function in here. Did move to window, did add self.table.refresh control. Let's click into this UI refresh control. Last I remember, there's another function. We need to tell the table view that it's done updating. Is refreshing, color, uh, begin refreshing, and refreshing. That's what it's called. Must be explicitly called once the refreshing has completed and must be used to indicate to the refresh control that a external event, we, yeah, we don't need that one. We just want this end refreshing. So go ahead and put that in right there. And let's just put a print here for now to start refresh. And let's see if we get that control. So go ahead and hit Command R. And let me open up our console here by hitting this. 
And we expand that a little bit and close this left panel. Let's go back to the simulator and we have this refresh control now. And every time we pull it, it uh, prints out, we should refresh. But we, we immediately uh, just say uh, end refreshing. So it goes away right away. Now, if we say uh, async after, and we put a delay on here of now plus three seconds. And we can use a trailing closure here. So get rid of execute. You'll see that it'll spin for three seconds. If we pull it, it'll spin for three seconds until it's done. And then it'll do that. So actually what we could uh, do in here is move this, get rid of that, simply call the fetch data function. And in fetch data, the first thing we want to do is empty everything in our table data array. So we can say remove all. And right here where we say, we, where we tell the table view to reload its data, even before then, what we can say is uh, basically tell the refresh control that you're done. And again, it's strong self and you don't need to wrap it into dispatch calls. So now it'll spin until the data has refreshed. So if we pull it, uh, it looks like it happens really, really fast, or it's not getting called at all. So let's see. I'm going to put a call in here. We're going to say fetching data. And what I'm also going to say is uh, if table dot uh, refresh control is refreshing. We're also going to print out. Let's actually move this. We're fetching data if it's not from the refreshing. Otherwise, we're going to be doing a refresh. So refreshing data. So the first time the app launches, we should get fetching data. And every time we pull on it, we should get refreshing data, which it in, in fact is because we are emptying out the uh, contents the refresh is just so fast that uh, you don't really even see it, which is actually kind of what you want in terms of the user experience. Because when you pull to refresh on like Facebook or Instagram, very rarely do you see a lag where there's no content, unless it's, you don't have internet or something. But uh, it's, it's supposed to be very, very seamless. But this is how you add a refresh control to any kind of uh, table or collection or scroll view. So this refresh control is actually off of any object that's a scroll view. And I want to mention that before we wrap up here. So if you read uh, the overview here, it says a UI refresh control object is a standard control that you attach to any UI scroll view. So you might be wondering, where the heck is a UI scroll view in here? So a table view and any type of collection view is actually just a subclass of a UI scroll view. And you can actually see that in here if you command click into the UI table view you can see Apple has declared it uh, as this open class here, and it's supported as of iOS 2. Wow, that was a long time ago. And it's nothing more than just a subclass of a UI scroll view, uh, and it has uh, other stuff on it, but that's irrelevant for this video. But, but yeah, so you, it's the, you can use this method to basically add a refresh control to any kind of, uh, any kind of view that is a scroll view. So yeah, that basically does it for this video. I will be pushing this code up as always. If you haven't smashed that like button already, make sure to do so for that YouTube algorithm uh, so we can help this video get out to as many people uh, as we possibly can. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions or anything at all. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.